Welcome to Vedial Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see about ionization enthalpy. So this is a neat question uh, and it is asked about this ionization enthalpy of the second period elements and we are supposed to tell the correct order and the, that means there is some anomalous behavior in this second period. So before that, we must know what is this ionization enthalpy. It is the energy needed to remove an electron from an isolated gaseous atom. So uh, let me show to you, like let us say this is an atom and uh, what is the energy needed to remove the outermost electron from it? So when you remove an electron, it becomes positively charged. So the energy needed to remove an electron from a gaseous atom is called as ionization energy. And in thermodynamics, we call it as enthalpy. And then, uh, you know, pretty well to remove an electron, we need energy. And that is why ionization enthalpies are always positive. And then, now if I am to remove a second electron from an already positively charged species, then it becomes even more difficult. So, the ionization enthalpy of the second, uh, uh, the second ionization enthalpy is always higher than the first. So, because the, uh, the element is already charged, so trying to remove an electron from an already charged uh, element is highly difficult. Uh, and next, the ionization enthalpy is always expressed in kilojoules per mole. So, this is the basic definition of ionization enthalpy. Now, going over to the periodic trends. Okay, so this is the general uh, table of the uh, which we are all familiar with and uh, let us uh, see an observation of this uh, table. So in this particular table, we see there is a disconnect. This disconnect is for the uh, D block because we are only going to compare the S block elements and the P block elements. So when we compare the S block and P block elements, uh, we know that uh, we, uh, the S block are group 1, group 2 and the P block starts from group 13, 14, 15, 16, okay. Uh, this is halogens, hydrogen is included here, so kindly ignore it. Halogens and then helium, hydrogen must have come there. And then this, so this is how uh, we know the groups are arranged. So, in this particular case, we are studying about the general trend of ionization potential. So, when you observe these numbers which are given at the bottom of each of the symbols, you will see the trend of ionization potential from lithium or hydrogen to cesium decreases. Similarly, when you see from uh, lithium to neon, that is the second period of elements, we see there is a trend. So the trend we see, say lithium is only 520, whereas neon is 2080. In the sense, uh, the ionization potential seems to increase across the period and decrease down the group generally. So what could be the reason that ionization potential decreases down the group and increases across the period? That we will see in the next slide. And then um, another important observation that you must look at is group 15 elements. So when you see group 15 element, it is the nitrogen family. And then group 16 element is the oxygen family. So when you compare nitrogen family and oxygen family, this is the anomaly. So the nitrogen family always has a higher ionization potential than the oxygen family. So this is one observation. Then observation number two is group two elements have a higher ionization energy than group three. So you the group two is the beryllium that is the alkaline earth metals and 13 is the boron family. Again, you see, uh, we are saying the general trend is ionization enthalpy increases across the period. But we see it is not a systematic increase, but there are deviations in the order. So there is no trend that is seen in case of ionization potential across the period. Whereas down the group, we see a trend, there is a gradual or steady decrease in ionization potential. So what is the reason for the steady decrease in ionization potential and the increase in ionization potential down the group and across the period is what we are going to see next. So when you know the everything is dependent on 
two important factors. One is the charge of the nucleus. Another one is the repulsion of electrons from each other. I'll explain to you what are they. So only these are the two major factors. So atomic size um, uh, also comes under this category. So uh, I'm just classifying the uh, factor into two parts. One is the charge of the nucleus and then the repulsion of electrons from each other. So when you see in case of elements, uh, the, this is uh, actually the atomic orbital of uh, uh, lithium sodium potassium that is down the group so as you see down the group the nuclear charge consistently increases so it's nuclear charge is nothing but uh, the charge of the protons and neutrons that is there in the, uh, the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus or the number of protons okay so when you see the nuclear charge the nuclear charge is steadily increasing from lithium to potassium and at the same time, when you see the orbitals, okay, the number of orbitals are also, sorry, the number of orbits are also increasing. So you see uh, only two shells here, then you see three shell, four shell. So as the nuclear charge increases, okay, and the size increases, we see the ability of the charge to attract the outermost electron decreases so i'm saying as the nuclear charge increases okay size increases so attraction decreases okay or the ability of the nucleus to hold this electron that is there in the outermost shell decreases. Now the reason why the attraction decreases is because of the poor shielding effect okay, or screening effect. So what is this screening effect? That you will see in some other uh, videos. Okay, Here I will just tell you what it means. Okay, So yeah, when uh, there is an outermost electron there are many electrons that are there on the inner orbitals. So these electrons have the capacity to prevent the nuclear charge from being attract uh, nuclear charge to be exposed to the electron that is on the outermost shell. So when they prevent or shield the nucleus, then the electron that is at the outside as more is free, it is not attracted. So it can go away very easily. In the sense, as the nuclear charge increases, as the size increases, as the attraction decreases, the ionization potential or ionization enthalpy decreases. Sorry, not increases, it decreases. So, down the group, it is down the group. So, down the group, the nuclear charge increases the size increases and as a result and as a result the attraction of the nuclear charge to the outermost electron decreases because of screening or shielding effect and so the electron can be very easily removed and that is the reason why the ionization energy decreases down the group okay so the charge of the nucleus is very important so the charge of the nucleus is what attracts the electron towards itself. So when the charge is not felt, the electron can be very easily removed. When the charge is more felt, the electron cannot be removed. So what is the screening effect or which kind of electron influences the charge of the electron, charge of the nucleus? So we know now we have S orbital, P orbital, D orbital and F orbital. So these four orbitals are the popular ones that we all know. So among these four orbitals, the S and P has a very good screening effect when compared to the D and F. D and F have poor shielding effect, whereas they are good. S and P are good. So it means when you have electrons which are filled in the S and P orbital, they offer a very good screening effect or shielding effect. 
okay and what would happen in those cases the electron will not will be less attracted to the nuclear charge nucleus and so they can be very easily removed on the contrary if there are electrons in the d orbital which are filled in the d orbital then though the nuclear charge will be high because the electrons are there in the d orbital and d orbital have a very poor shielding effect okay there could be a possibility in certain cases the nuclear charge will be higher and the electron in the outermost orbital will be slightly more attracted than the others we will see some exceptions like that also okay but basically what we see here is when down the group the nuclear charge increases as the size increases the attraction decreases and so the ionization potential decreases the reason is because of the screening or shielding effect of the electrons which are there in the s and p orbital on the inside okay and the second uh, example or the second factor is the repulsion of electrons from each other so what do we mean by repulsion of electrons from each other so when you are having an orbital there is a pair of electrons so these pair of electrons can also cause repulsions between themselves so this repulsive force that is existing between the electrons can also be a reason for very easy removal of the electron from the orbital so suppose there is a paired electron and an unpaired electron so the unpaired electrons are free when compared to a set of paired electrons so uh, you know pretty well we have hans rule we have pauli's exclusion principle in place and based on these principles we know half filled orbitals are more stable than partially filled orbitals so if in case there is a partially filled orbital like this then there is more possibility of this paired electron to be removed than the electron to be removed from these unpaired uh, orbital which is half filled that is what is called as repulsion of repulsion sorry repulsion of electrons from each other so the first factor is the charge of the nucleus the second factor is repulsion of electron from each other so what is repulsion of electron from each other that is when there is a pair of electrons in a partially filled orbital the electrons have more possibility to be removed and that is called as the repulsion of electron from each other so we will see these examples so now let's go back to the second period as i told you in the second period we see uh, there is a anomalous trend so what is why there is a anomalous trend in this so the statements are given here but then i will explain to you what happens in these cases so in case of lithium uh, beryllium so all the second period elements the uh, we know their outermost orbital uh, is uh, let me say it is in case of beryllium 1s2 2s2 it is 2p2 this is for beryllium that is its atomic number is 4 so it is this then in case of boron they are all p orbitals so it is 1s2 2s2 2p1 so in case of all the p orbitals the outermost electron gets filled up in the p orbital so it is 2p1 in case of boron 2p2 in case of carbon 2p3 in case of nitrogen 2p4 and 2p5 okay uh, the 2s is filled the 2s is filled in all the categories okay so this is the outermost electronic configuration so but then uh, what happens to the nuclear charge so in all these categories what we see is Uh, when you have the nuclear charge the elect the nuclear charge keeps increasing because atomic number increases but then the electrons are not filled in the subsequent orbitals sorry subsequent orbits they are continuously being added into the same orbit let me say i'm ignoring the uh, inner orbit i'm just writing the outermost electronic configuration so in case of boron we have you know uh, the second orbit having three electrons okay in case of uh, beryllium again we have the second or orbit having two electrons 
okay so uh, in case of carbon we'll have four electrons or uh, when you see the orbital picture in case of beryllium the p orbital is vacant whereas the uh, in case of boron the p orbital has one electron so when we see uh, the ionization potential both beryllium and boron have electron in the 2s orbital but beryllium doesn't have a electron in the p orbital whereas boron has an electron in the p orbital so the extra electron which is there in the p orbital can be easily removed when compared to beryllium why because because the s orbital is offering a screening effect is preventing the 2p electron to experience the nuclear charge of the boron so though boron has 5 as the nuclear charge the electron is not removed or is not experiencing sorry the electron is not experiencing the nuclear charge and so boron has a lower ionization potential than beryllium and we know all of these uh when we see across the group as i told you the electrons are added into the same orbital only and that is the reason why though the nuclear charge increases the overall ionization potential uh we see uh, has a different trend in how do we see the trend there is more attraction of the nuclear so in the group uh, down the group we said the size increases here you don't see the size increasing Uh, the size starts to decrease and as a result the nuclear charge has a better attraction and that is why you see the ionization potential increases so in case of across the period what happens the electrons are added on the same set of orbitals and so there is more attraction of the nuclear charge to the valence electron and so we have a general trend okay and uh, this anomaly i already told in the previous slide itself so the anomaly is beryllium is having a higher ionization potential than boron so what is the reason in case of boron the 2p electrons are shielded by the 2s electrons and as a result uh, you will see that uh, these electrons are not experiencing nuclear charge and so can be easily removed that is why boron has a lower ionization potential than beryllium and then uh, uh, as i told you we will also see the uh, trend of nitrogen and oxygen so again we we already told the general trend right now we are taking the specific example of nitrogen and oxygen so in case of nitrogen and oxygen again as i told you in the initial uh, factors influencing If the electron electron repulsive factor is the main factor in case of nitrogen and oxygen because in both these categories the electrons are getting filled up in the 2p orbital only for nitrogen it is a half filled orbital whereas in case of oxygen it is a partially filled orbital so it is easier to remove an electron from a partially filled orbital than from a half filled orbital because half filled orbitals are more stable than partially filled orbitals so in case of a partially filled orbital there is more electron electron repulsion and that this is the reason for nitrogen having a higher ionization potential than oxygen so uh, all of us must remember the general trend is it increases why does it increase because the nuclear charge increases but the electrons are continuously being added into the same orbital so there is a increase in ionization potential across the period but we see two anomalies one is for boron and beryllium another is for nitrogen and oxygen or in general we can say group 15 and group 16 and group 2 and group 13 so in case of group 2 and group 13 we see that it is the uh, 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 the extra electron which is there in the p orbital it can be easily removed whereas uh, in case of nitrogen versus oxygen 
it is the extra electron which is there in the p orbital of oxygen atom or in other words it is the uh, electron electron repulsive force that forces the electron out and also the condition that half filled orbitals are more stable than partially filled orbital favors oxygen to remove its electron easily when compared to nitrogen atom so now let's go back to the question so now we know what is the answer so the answer is boron has a higher so lithium boron then beryllium then we have carbon oxygen in the sense boron has a lower ionization potential than beryllium and oxygen also has a lower ionization potential than beryllium okay hope you understood